Welcome, my name is Dr. Luis Vasquez. I'm the Associate Dean of the Graduate School at New Mexico State University. Today we're going to talk to you about surviving graduate school. It is a workshop that we often do to help students throughout their journey in graduate school to make sure that they're successful. We want to make sure that when you receive your degree, you are successful at any position that you apply for as you go out into the world. One of the major issues you should become acquainted with in graduate school are your expectations. So let me ask you, what are your expectations? You should know what your expectations are as a student, a research assistant, and a teaching assistant. What are your goals for the semester? Are they to make that 4.0? Are they to make sure that you get the research experience that you're looking for? Are they to make sure that you learn how to write your papers in such a way that will lead to possibilities of presentations or talking to others in the field as you go to conferences? These are very important things to do. Or are they also to get to know your advisor? Your advisor is the key and is your right-hand person as a mentor within your department for you. They'll know what to register you for, what kind of classes to take, and what kind of activities you might want to be involved in. They also teach you the etiquette of your department and what rules and policies to follow when working with other faculty. And you should also know what's in your student handbook. Almost every department has a student handbook. In your student handbook, they'll define what your roles are as a student. They'll, you also know not only about the courses, timelines, assistantships that may be available, fellowships, scholarships, and all the general rules within that department. These are things that you should become familiar with. So please know your expectations. They'll take you a long way in making sure that you're successful in your graduate program. Another skill to attain, another expectation you should meet in, in surviving graduate school is seeking the highest grades. You know that you must maintain a minimum of a 3.0 grade point average. This is what we call in grad school a B average. You must maintain it in order to avoid being on probation or being suspended. So you always must be careful and try to achieve the highest grade point average possible within yourself. Grades impact fellowships and scholarships also. The higher the grade, the more opportunities to apply for fellowships and scholarships. And there are many kinds out there. Some fellowships go throughout the summer. Some are just per semester. Some are for the year. Scholarships are the same way. So maintaining that grade point average will also impact your ability to get fellowships and scholarships and also the experiences that you get. For instance, if you're picked to work on a research grant, that's quite an honor. That means that a faculty thinks high enough of you to bring you together with them to make sure that you're successful in getting the experiences you need in doing research in, area, in an area that you're very, very excited about. Sometimes these research grants take you to other countries or other parts of the country or other parts of the world. And that's very exciting, very exciting. And in the end, you might want to get a postdoc. After you experience the research experiences and you receive some fellowships, you might say, you know, a postdoc experience would be a great, great experience for me. And what I mean by that is you're able to go somewhere else to another university, maybe another country, and get that, those experiences and being able to work with others that are not from your program but represent maybe other parts of the world, other cultures, other languages. And this can be very exciting in enhancing your skills and making you more marketable as you go on in your career to be the most successful as you can be. Now let's talk about some other types of skills that you might need. For instance, let's talk about study groups. Are study groups important? Do they help you? Well, let's talk about that. When you're in a study group and if you decide to form a study group, many times a study group can review your class notes and you review them together. Each of you will bring your class notes together and to see if you all heard the same thing as, the, as what the instructor was talking about. And are you, are you all consistent with that material? This helps you a lot because when you have your tests and when you're doing essays, all the material that you wrote notes on come together, especially when you've talked them through with your other classmates. Explaining materials to others can be very helpful. For instance, when I explain materials to other, to other students or professors, that makes me want to know not only know the information better, but also be able to present it in a way that I understand it and I believe that others will too. And this is very, very helpful. You can form a study group. 
Some of us uh, form study groups and they become social groups. That you have to be careful about. Some of us form study groups and they become drinking groups. That also we have to be careful about. But for the most part, most of us form study groups because we're very serious about our education and want to make sure that if we share knowledge with others and they share with us, not only will I be successful, but all of us as a group will make sure that we all become successful together. And that's one of the reasons why you might want to have a study group. So for those of you who like to work in study groups, this is a great way to learn. Some of us like to be alone. And I'll talk about that in a minute, about what it's like if you're going to work by yourself versus being in a study group. Another skill that you must learn in being successful and surviving graduate school is networking with everyone. For instance, get to know your professors. Many will say, well, how do you get to do that? There's so many within my department. There's nine or ten. Well, let me let you in on a little secret. What you need to do is after you've been admitted to your department, or even before, to be quite honest with you, look at the website of the department that you apply to. Get to know what each of the professor's interests are, what their research areas are, and the areas that, that they teach in. So when you do meet them, you have a common place to begin a discussion with them and a conversation about not only what their interests are, but how your interests may fit with theirs. And this is how you get to know your professors. Don't wait until you have an issue within the class and then go see the professor. Try to get to know them beforehand and go to see them in a positive light. For instance, I've met professors who I'll say, you know, I really enjoyed the lecture today and I really enjoyed, and I'm specific about what they talked about. So they know that not only am I interested, but I'm also interested in the things that they're doing and some of the things that they're involved with. Sometimes I volunteer. And volunteering is okay. I'll volunteer to be in a research group so I can get that experience. And that allows me to use that experience to apply for graduate assistantships, research assistantships, teaching assistantships. So that's a really nice way to begin to develop a nice social network. I also try to develop my strong relationship with others, not only in the department, but across departments. Like for instance, when I was in graduate school, I was able to teach human relations in one department, even though it wasn't my department or discipline, but it allowed me the opportunity to have a graduate assistantship because I had volunteered a semester before. These are things that you want to keep in mind in building those social networks. I call it developing a social capital with a foundation of trust to make sure that I'm successful with those that I work with that allow me to reach the goals that I need to reach in order to graduate successfully from my graduate program. An important area in graduate school, especially in graduate school, is seeking the right mentors. Mentors can come in many ways. Some are mentors that you trust and you can talk about your personal life. Others are mentors of research and they show you how to do different things within research projects. Others are mentors within your classes and help you learn things from different perspectives so you have a better understanding. So there's various mentors and you can have multiple mentors. The trick is to find mentors that you can trust and be able to talk to and know that they have your best interests in mind. Seek people who are honest and thoughtful. People who can develop a non-threatening, safe, supportive environment, especially when they have to give you some difficult feedback that many times it's hard to hear. Well, we know we're not all perfect and sometimes we need to hear what are things that we can be, come better at and also grow from. On the other hand, we also want people that can be honest and thoughtful and talk to us about what is it that we do right? What is it that they like about us? And how can we use those skills to be successful in graduate school? And above all, find someone with good listening skills. They need to be able to not only hear what you're saying, understand what you're saying, but be able to facilitate a level of understanding that allows you to be honest with yourself as well as the person you're talking to. And this is what forms the basis of good, strong relationships that allow you to go through graduate school. I still am in contact with some of my mentors from graduate school, and they still give me good advice. Even though I've become a full professor and I moved on, I still keep close communication with them because it is through their wisdom that it helps me share my wisdom with others so they too can be successful. Now let's talk about another skill that you will need in graduate school. And this is called research. Finding research experiences. 
internship research experiences. Look for opportunities to do research. Where can you find them? Talking to your advisor, your mentors. Also looking up throughout your various opportunities across the country. Uh, for instance, last year, we sent some students on minority fellowships. We sent some others on, on archeological fellowships across the country. We even sent some to do assessments with children in Costa Rica. Those are various opportunities that arose. One, because the students sought, sought them out. Two, because they were excited about it. And three, as I spoke earlier, they developed the networks necessary in order to be able to seek out such opportunities. They also help you develop those professional skills because when you're out doing research fellowships, you work with outstanding people across the country. Sometimes you get the opportunity to work with some of the top researchers in the country. You will learn more in one summer, one semester, and one year than you may in your whole life about what research is about, how to do research, and how important research is in making sure that you move society along. New knowledge, the sharing of knowledge, and, and the generalizability of knowledge is very, very important for our society and moving forward into the 21st century. Also, explore the opportunities in your own department. Even though it might be a small research project one of your professors is doing, you might be able to be the one to either do data analysis, you might be able to do the literature review. You'll learn different ways to not only look up research, but how to interpret research, how to explain what it means, and most of all, you'll become the expert in whatever you're doing because you're working with experts. And that allows you to also share what you learn with others in the future. As you may become researchers yourself, you may become faculty, you may become administrators, whatever your position may be. But because you've learned the basic skills of how to do research and seeking those opportunities, that would also allow you to be successful in almost any position you will enter with those an analytical skills that you have learned. Please join us for part two of Surviving Graduate School.